I wanted to give you a little bit of history um, about the energy action plan that we created. Uh, so back in June, um, we created the, uh, the energy action plan was approved and was created by actually a large group of uh, citizens. We had residents, area high school students, business owners, board and commission members, city staff, such as myself. And then also we had the assistance of the Excel Energy Partners and Energy staff. Uh, so it really was a collective group effort. And with that, we made a goal, which you can see on the screen is to reduce energy related greenhouse gas emissions in Minnetonka. So again, this is citywide, not just city, uh, city of Minnetonka functions, but residents, businesses, everyone to reduce those greenhouse gas emissions by uh, 160,000 metric tons of CO2 before the end of 2030. Uh, so it's a a big goal, but breaking it down into things and different strategies we'd have, it's very, it's something we believe is going to be obtainable. Uh, so with that, we had a lot of these really great energy reduction strategies with a lot of outreach um, at public events, which we are not having as many right now due to COVID-19. I know personally, I got married last year, so things change with COVID and we just sort of roll with the punches and uh, change those up. I did get married, but again, that was a little different. So just like that, we're doing this a little bit different tonight, doing it virtually instead of maybe in person like we would have otherwise. Next slide, please. Uh, so we've created this uh, sustainable Minnetonka webinar series. Uh, it's gonna be on the first Tuesday every month. We plan to have it around six o'clock. Uh, future topics are include things like understanding your utility bill, reducing waste. Uh, we have some uh, people that will be really great to tell you about um, waste reduction. It'll be a little longer meeting, but it's gonna be a really good one. Um, and renewable energy and more. We're gonna have a lot of different things. Uh, in case you want some question from me, I have a question for me personally here, work as a staff employee, or if you even have something that you're interested in, more than happy to talk to you more about that, um, either on the phone or through email, both my phone number and email there on the screen. And then uh, also, if you have a topic that you're really interested in, maybe that's something other people, because if one person's asking, likely others are too. So we can maybe fit that in as another future topic for our webinar series. Next slide, please. Uh, one other thing before we really get going and last, our last housekeeping item is a couple of things on our webpage. So Minnetonka, the city of Minnetonka has a sustainable Minnetonka webpage. You can find it very easily at minnetonkamn.gov slash green. Or if you go to our webpage and you go under city, there's a tab that says sustainable Minnetonka. There you can subscribe and we will send out emails about anything sustainable that's going on in the city to maybe keep you up to date things like events, um, other initiatives that are coming out, um, money cost saving items, really, you name it, you're going to get the email through it. And you'll either get an email or a text message is your choice. You can also find out other things about Minnetonka here with our new sustainability commission that's going to be starting here the uh, late spring, early summer, and also our energy action plan. You can find a copy of that and uh, city initiatives, and then also our monthly webinar series you can see there in red. With that, I will turn it over to our host we have tonight, who is uh, Stacy Boots Camp, to kick us off with our uh, first topic. Thanks, Drew. I'm really excited to be here with everyone. It's a really great turnout um, for a Tuesday night, and I hope to see so many people participating in upcoming webinars. This is a a great offering from the city of Minnetonka. And it's really exciting that um, there's a sustainability commission here to support uh, a lot of these endeavors. So um, first off, I think we were gonna start with a little bit of polling. Um, so just for a little bit of audience engagement, we're wondering what percentage of Minnetonka housing stock do you think is over 20 years old? Just about everybody's responded, so I'll show you the results here. So most of you actually 50-50 on the 41% option. 
Um, oops. 41% of you um, on the 79 and 83, and just a few of you guessed the 93% option. And so that's the answer then, Deirdre, is that right? <clears throat> that is. 93%, all right. 93%. Okay. So then continuing on, um, so my name is like, Drew gave me a, a very good introduction. My name is Stacey Boots Camp. I work at the Center for Energy and Environment and I've been working on uh, residential energy efficiency at CEE uh, for 11 years now. So I love talking about energy efficiency and uh, I'm happy to, to share what I know or learn something new tonight. Uh, so at CEE, um, maybe you've heard of our organization. Uh, we've been in Minnesota working on energy efficiency for over 40 years now. We do, uh, we design, we do a lot of research that helps inform programs that we design and deliver. Um, and so tonight, since um, we're talking mostly about uh, residential energy efficiency, we're going to focus on the benefits of that. Um, but just, you know, we do a lot of other things. Um, to help Minnesota become a uh, very sustainable um, energy wise state. And we have a lot of great uh, resources to help people and organizations, um, businesses support um, making more sustainable choices. So what are the benefits of energy efficiency? So it's not, not the same as as people shouting out when we're in person, but uh, nine times out of 10, people will say that um, the biggest benefit of energy efficiency is that it helps reduce your utility bills, um, putting money back in your pocket. Of course, another benefit of energy efficiency is that it increases your home's comfort year round. And then of course, we can also feel good um, when making our homes more efficient that we're also doing something good for the environment. So why, why is it always the first thing uh, that comes up? People you know, think about money a lot. Um, and we do actually spend quite a bit of money on our utility bills. So almost $2,000 uh, of the average Minnesotan's household uh, income goes to um, paying for utility bills. So you know, if there's a way that we can reduce that to um, make our homes more efficient and comfortable and put our money towards other things, uh, that would be great. So now uh, I'm wondering what motivated you to, end, to attend this workshop? Um, was it money? Was it um, that you're curious about the Sustainable Minnetonka initiatives? Um, what might have been the thing that brought you here tonight? I'll let a few more people respond and I'll share the results shortly. Now you should see on your screen, um, you're all here for different reasons, um, but the majority of you are here because you wanna support sustainability initiatives in Minnetonka. And that's great. That's really wonderful to hear that so many people um, are interested in, in supporting that. So excited to uh, have lots of participation in, in these webinars. So in our 40 years plus of, of working on energy efficiency at CEE, we've come up with kind of a recipe for an energy smart home. Uh, so that involves people having good habits like turning down thermostats, turning off lights behind you, um, just you know, simple low and no cost things you can do, making informed choices, uh, buying good products that you know, have been vetted that are 
Energy Star labeled. And also making good investments for the future. So taking into account um, the opportunities that are in your house. Every house is different. How we use our houses. Um, you know, you may have a very similar house to your neighbor, but the number of people living in it um, and how you use it may be very different. So um, looking at what your customized opportunities are in your home and making uh, good choices for the future. So at CEE, we like to um, let people know we're with you wherever you are on, on this step of the staircase here. So maybe people are starting to do things like switching out light bulbs or just getting in good habits of turning off lights behind them. Or maybe you're looking at things like, do I need to replace my water heater? What kind of um, furnace should I be looking at? Um, so wherever you are on this staircase, we'd like to be able to give you some solutions towards making efficient um, and smart decisions for your home. So here, first I wanted to share with you just some like great no cost opportunities that uh, are available to folks. Um, so we can all practice turning off lights behind us. I really work on this one with my kids. Um, turning off fans when we leave the room. I work on this one with my mom um, because fans in rooms cool people. Um, they don't cool the room. Um, so whereas a, a ceiling fan in a very large vaulted ceiling might help to um, control the temperature and comfort in that room. In most rooms, like the bedroom I'm in right now, um, it's not going to do very much besides cool me when I'm in the room. So just remembering uh, that you can save on your electric bill by turning off fans when you leave the room. And then year round, there's different things you can do with uh, blinds and curtains just to let in the sun or keep the sun out uh, in order to decrease how much you're having to adjust your thermostat to, to keep your living space comfortable. And then this is um, probably, I, a lot of us know about switching out light bulbs. So uh, I've started focusing more on things people can do with their entertainment centers since we're all home and maybe using them more. Um, but one thing you can do that's a, a pretty low cost thing is invest in a, a smart strip for every entertainment center you have in your home. Um, putting those components on a power management system like this will save you about 10 to $15 a year for each one that you put on that um, management system. And these power strips cost about you know, 10 to, to $20. So um, that's a very good return on your investment. And it's something that you know once you set it up, you can feel good that you're saving every day. Uh, for instance, I have one like the one on the left with the blue controller. So when um, I have my TV plugged into the blue one, when I turn off the TV, uh, then it turns off the other green ones, which are uh, DVD player, game system, um, and so those get shut off when the TV goes off, but then we leave, you know, our router and our modem plugged into the red one, which is remaining constantly on. So just setting up systems like that to make it easy for you to save energy, um, but also, you know, knowing that you're contributing to cutting energy waste. So it's a couple low cost things. Also I'd like to throw in a, a couple home maintenance slides. So these um, dryer vents are both uh, efficiency and safety concern uh, because if uh, you have a dryer vent like this, it can get very built up with lint, which can become uh, a safety concern and an efficiency concern because a, a fire could um, is more susceptible to getting started in an event like this rather than what's recommended um, for safety and efficiency, this rigid ductwork on your dryer vent. And then also just checking where your dryer vent terminates outside of your house uh, periodically, just making sure that's not getting backed up with lint or small twigs. Uh, I actually found some small twigs in mine last fall. So a bird might've been preparing a home. Thankfully that didn't happen yet. So uh, we prevented that, but just checking to make sure that, that those are free and clear um, a couple of times a year, you know, to make sure your dryer is getting the best airflow that is possible um, and that there aren't any safety concerns. 
So we've talked a, a little bit about um, some of these low and no cost things, but I want to focus most of our conversation on um, heating and cooling our homes, making ourselves comfortable because we do live in a, a climate where we, we do need to use a lot of energy to keep our homes comfortable. Um, so just reminding people also um, about another low and no cost thing of changing out the, the filter in your furnace. I think most people probably have a forced air furnace like this. Um, just there are a few different kinds of filters that need to be changed out at different durations. Um, but when I was in the field for three years doing energy audits, it was quite remarkable how many people actually um, didn't know that there was a furnace filter slot or that they needed to change it out. So this is just a really great opportunity uh, to help your furnace function uh, at its highest level of efficiency, protect it from not, you know, prematurely uh, being harmed by too much uh, debris being pulled through there. But uh, just a great reminder for folks. I always like to do it kind of at the change of the seasons. And then that kind of brings us to, well, talking about furnaces, there are quite a few levels of efficiency of furnaces. And especially in a, a city with uh, quite a varied uh, age of housing stock, you might see all of these types of furnaces there. Uh, so there are furnaces, I mean, even older than this, we have, you know, gravity furnaces that might be 50% efficient, but these are the ones that we typically see in doing energy audits. And um, if you are having a furnace that's older than 20 to 30 years, um, that would definitely be like the expected lifetime of it. And so you might wanna think about uh, moving to a higher efficiency model. There are um, the most efficient and safe models available now are in that upper right-hand corner, they're sealed combustion, high efficiency furnaces. Uh, so those have PVC pipes that um, directly bring in clean air and then um, exhaust the combustion air right outside. So that makes them much more safe, um, giving you peace of mind and they're designed to be much more efficient. So um, that's kind of one of the things that's interesting to learn about uh, when you have an energy audit done on your house or when you have your furnace tuned up, they should tell you things like that too. A common question that I've been getting a lot at workshops is about air source heat pumps. Um, so air source heat pumps used to be something that was um, used in warmer climates, but there's been a lot of research uh, done and a lot of um, redesigning on these um, systems. And so these are now really viable systems in cold climates like Minnesota. So an air source heat pump um, runs off of electricity and these uh, can be used for both heating and cooling. Um, what we've found so far is that the return on investment for switching over to an air source heat pump from a system you already have um, would be a, a decent investment for people that have maybe propane, um, some sort of delivered fuel, because that cost can get pretty high. The, the price comparison um, isn't beneficial to switch if you have natural gas um, as of right now. So um, it's, it's a good opportunity if you also would have something, you'd have a, a boiler system. So maybe you would have radiators. Uh, so in a house that has radiators, you wouldn't wanna probably add a lot of duct work. So these mini splits, which you see in the bottom picture can be installed on multiple levels of your house to deliver um, cooling and heating year round. Um, and those would range on the lower costs of the installation range towards more towards the 3000 um, compared to if you're looking at a larger whole home system um, that's similar to the one on top, the top right, that, you know, those can be as much as 11,000 or so, but there are also really great rebates. Um, <clears throat> and I do encourage you if you are um, doing some consideration of upgrading, switching your HVAC system uh, to, to do some research on this and to talk to your um, contractor that you're working with to see if they would recommend that for you. Like I said, each, each home is different in how people use it. Um, 
their opportunities are different, but it's just a new thing that Minnesotans are starting to consider. And then smart thermostats are, are also another exciting thing um, related to our heating and cooling. Uh, so both XL Energy and CenterPoint Energy have great rebates for smart thermostats. Uh, and there's a lot of cool new programs that are available to people. And uh, I would love, love to encourage you to ask questions if you are interested in them. Um, if you have a home energy squad visit, the experts can talk through um, with you what might be your best option. Um, but there are models that are even free uh, to people now um, because of all the rebates. So if you are going to be having a home energy squad visit, you might be eligible to get a free uh, smart thermostat installed. So that, like we talked about, there are things that we can do ourselves to make our homes more efficient. You know, the duct, cleaning the dryer duct work, um, <clears throat> changing out light bulbs, the smart thermostats, or it's not the smart, the smart strips. Um, lots of things we can do. Maybe people are putting plastic on their windows. Um, but if ultimately you're finding that your house is feeling really uncomfortable and drafty, um, there might be a larger problem at hand that needs to be addressed. So if you're feeling like, <clears throat> excuse me, you're having a lot of draftiness coming in from the windows and the doors uh, during the winter, chances are that, that there's a lot of that um, air that's escaping. So that warm, um, moist air that you're paying to heat up and humidify, um, it could be escaping from the penetrations in your um, heated space to the unheated space in your attic. Uh, and then that in turn is gonna bring in that cold air, cold dry air and, and make it feel very uncomfortable in the house. So other signs, it's not always easy to see that that's happening. And if your home isn't extremely drafty, <clears throat> you might not know um, that you might be losing a lot of energy in your home. But if you're feeling that you have, there's a lot of, you know, static electricity in your home or that there's, your skin is feeling very dry, you're needing to use humidifiers a lot, that's another indication that there could be a lot of air leakage in the home. Another sign might be that you have bad ice dams year after year. Of course, some winters aren't very bad. And if we're not getting a lot of snow, you're not going to see ice dams. But uh, I think two, three winters back, it was really bad. And there were ice dams anywhere I went in Minnesota. Every city had bad ice dams. Um, so what's happening there is that, you know, even if you do have enough insulation in your attic, that if those penetrations like this plumbing vent right here aren't properly sealed up around them, that warm air is still going to rise up and out and then um, melt the snow, which will then refreeze over the unheated soffit. Um, and if it gets bad enough, if there's enough snow, if there's enough melting, it can cause a really bad ice dam, uh, which if that gets bad enough, it can back up into your house and cause some real damage with, um, you know, the durability of your walls and ceilings, which we did see um, <clears throat> excuse me, and hear about from a lot of customers. I think that was the winter of 2018, 19. So we don't, we don't want that. We want to keep our, uh, keep the ice dams away and keep our walls and ceilings intact. Um, here's actually a, a actual picture of a um, blue vent that's going through an attic. So um, as you can see, plenty of space for that warm air to rise up and out. Uh, lots of indication that that is happening with that darkened uh, insulation around the pipe showing that that air movement. So all of these things that are <clears throat> penetrating from the heated space of the home to the unheated space of the attic, um, you know, whether that's light fixtures, cords, attic hatches, um, chimneys, all of them need to be sealed up um, either with a caulk or a spray foam or a special insulated box to prevent that from happening. And um, so it's, it is really important to do um, that air sealing piece though before you do the insulation because um, years ago there were a lot of people who uh, unfortunately hired contractors that would just put in the insulation and not do that very 
important air sealing piece, <clears throat> excuse me, and then people were still having uh, problems with ice dams and comfort in their homes. So very important that they go hand in hand. Uh, here's just a couple pictures. Uh, right now is actually a great time to go out and walk around your neighborhood and see where there might be um, heat loss happening and opportunity for insulating and air sealing in the attic. Here's um, a picture of a, a home before and after they did the work in the attic. So quite a difference there. And so another opportunity, um, talking about insulation though, is, is walls. And so uh, if your home was built before 1970, which very well could be the case in Minnetonka, um, there's no guarantee that there's any insulation in your walls. Um, so actually my mother-in-law lives in Minnetonka and her home was built in 1959. She um, had lived there for almost 30 years without knowing that there was no insulation in the walls. And then she had an energy audit and learned that. And I'm very proud of her and her husband, husband that they did uh, promptly insulate their house. Uh, but it just goes to show that very smart, informed people um, can live in their house a long time without knowing um, that their walls might not be insulated. So we wouldn't go out on a cold winter day without our coat on. We don't want our house to be in that situation either. So what's recommended with wall insulation um, is getting it up to an R11 and to get that cavity filled. And of course we wanna hire uh, a rebate eligible contractor who's gonna do a good job. And I, we kind of were getting at this before, but um, there are quite a few homes, unfortunately, in Minnesota, uh, over 400,000 homes that have inadequate insulation. So we've got quite an opportunity here to improve um, how much energy we're using and losing from, from not having insulate, well uh, insulated homes here. So what can help us? Uh, well, we're happy that uh, there's a great program that's a very low cost to um, people who have center point energy and XL energy. Uh, so the home energy squad visits that are available through your utilities uh, provide different, <clears throat> excuse me, offerings. There is a virtual home visit. Uh, if people are comfortable with just um, doing something um, more, you know, Zoom-like, um, they want to maybe wait to have an in-home visit. This is an option for people to um, have a total virtual experience um, and get a very accurate, um, customized report from two very qualified uh, energy technicians. This visit is free. Um, it usually goes hand in hand with um, the other visit. And so at the virtual visit or the phone consultation, um, they would just talk with talk to you about what opportunities might be in your home, um, what your concerns are in your house, what issues you might be having. And um, once, once they kind of go through all of that and um, just talk about the age of your house, insulation levels, then they will um, recommend maybe, maybe your home's in great shape and um, you've already installed a lot of products. So um, they're just gonna say, hey, good job. Um, but nine times out of 10, um, there's some opportunity for people to improve efficiency and, and they want to do that. So there are two different kinds of visits. Uh, the energy saver visit would be recommended for homes that are newer than 2000. Um, and then for homes that are built before 2000, we would recommend the energy planner visit, which is um, really taking a, a look at the insulation levels, um, the mechanicals in the house, um, and then if there is the recommendation to improve insulation levels, um, that will be noted in the report that people get. Um, our technicians can actually, um, they'll write up a quote that gives you the total of what uh, an insulation job would cost. And they can even sign you up with qualified insulation contractors. There's several of them um, that participate in this program. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization, and our goal is really to help people make their homes more efficient. We are a third party here, and we don't get any um, kickbacks from this. We just really want to make it easy for people to take those next steps and make their homes more efficient. 
So people are always wondering like, what's going on in my town? Uh, so here are some of the, I pulled uh, what the recommendations were from the past year of visits. Um, so not every home gets a recommendation, but there were 170 visits that the Home Energy Squad did where there were recommendations. And it looks like um, the biggest opportunities for Minnetonka homeowners uh, were to do the attic work in their homes. Uh, also big opportunities usually for, for ventilation and for uh, improving efficiency of water heaters. So um, it's, it's just kind of exciting to see what's out there and compare you know, what your home might be like compared to your neighbors. And so this, it is, um, exciting but there's a lot to a lot of recommendations that come with getting an energy audit or maybe they aren't there aren't if you've already done a lot of them but we do have a team of energy advisors uh, that help people take those next steps whether that's um, securing financing getting rebates um, just figuring out which contractor is going to be the best to help them get the work done and we, we're here with you the whole step of the way. So if you have questions about um, lighting, if you have questions about contractors or air source heat pumps, water heaters, we're here to help people with that. And um, so we wanted to also learn tonight if there are projects that you're already thinking about doing because that can help inform um, what kind of opportunities we wanna provide in, in upcoming webinars to people. Now let a couple more people respond to the poll and I'll share the results. Looks like the top result from this group is air sealing and insulating my attic. Great, thanks, Deirdre. I took the mm -hmm. kids for a, a short walk around the neighborhood this evening, and I saw that there were a lot, a lot of opportunities in my neighborhood too for for doing that kind of work. My house was built in 1969. In case anyone was wondering, that's the age of our neighborhood. So there's a lot of opportunities here too. All right, so um, Drew, I might hand it back over to you now, and then. Um, we can move into talking about some exciting questions people might have after that. Sure. So I just wanted to uh, make everyone aware who, here who's on the call. We've promoted this before, so people may have seen this. Uh, but the city of Minnetonka actually is uh, for the, I think this now will be the third or fourth, third year in a row, I think, maybe fourth year in a row, that we've uh, contributed to uh, have residents go and get a home energy squad visit. So as you saw the prices there before, the energy saver visit is usually $70. The city of Minnetonka is uh, going to actually pay for the first up to 280 homes to have either an energy saver visit or an energy planner visit. So instead of that being $70, it would be $35 for the saver visit or for the um, energy planner visit. Instead of $100, it would be $50. Uh, so that's a great opportunity. I know um, if you look through there, the things that you get, it is quite the saving, um, even with that price. So one other thing to note, too, is that um, that was, I was informed tonight that Center for Energy and the Envir Environment will be giving away one free visit for a household that applies within 24 hours of this meeting. So later tonight, maybe tomorrow. It's getting, it's getting late already, but um, at least it's dark outside. Uh, feel free to sign up for that, and then you might, you'll be in a drawing then to get a free visit, so chances that you might get one. And then another thing to note, too, is that we they uh, do have free visits for income qualified homes, so if that's something that you think you might be involved with, you can call Stacy or contact the folks over at C, uh, Center for the Energy and the Environment, and they can uh, maybe 
connect you with some more information on that. Uh, also, after this meeting, everyone will receive an email with a link on how to sign up. So no need to frantically write down anything if you want right now. We're also going to send out some info, but you can also find that information over at mncee.org. You can see down at the bottom, or you can call that number down there also. Uh, also, one other thing to note is uh, that we also have rehab programs for qualifying homes. So if you're doing a rehabilitation for your project, you can also call us here at the city and we can look to see if you qualify for uh, some other assistance. So a lot of assistance opportunities, just make sure you reach out to us to let us know. So I think next we may have a, a resident here to talk. I'm not sure. Mike, do we have someone there? As a matter of fact, we have a guest with us tonight, um, Brian Golub, who uh, lives in Minnetonka and did have a home energy squad visit. Um, and Brian has uh, graciously agreed to share some of his experiences with, uh, with that home energy squad visit. Brian? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. <clears throat> good evening. Good evening, everybody. I, I, I want to address three questions that I think some of you might have. <clears throat> Why did we do this? What did we learn from the home audit? And would I recommend it? First of all, why did I do it? Or I should say, why did my wife and I do this? Because we're very concerned about environmental sustainability. And my background happens to be uh, environmental health and safety and sustainability, plus a number of other environmental related tasks and topics. So we are also concerned about energy conservation in our house. And you know, in the bottom line, or the, the la least was, Hey, if we could save a few dollars too and help the, help the planet reduce the global warming, all the better. So those are some of the reasons why we did it. <clears throat> we decided for the energy planner visit, we took advantage of the city's generosity. And instead of paying $100, we paid $50, which was a tremendous value. All of our, and I hate to admit this, we had some incandescent bulbs in the house and they were replaced with LEDs at no, no cost to us. We had... Honeywell programmable thermostats, which we put in a number of years ago, which are still perfect. So we didn't need any new Nest uh, thermostats, but they did offer programmable thermostats. So the value that we would have gotten far exceeded probably $100. Uh, we learned quite a bit. <clears throat> Two people came out. Now our audit was done prior to the uh, COVID outbreak. It was on February 11th, 2020. So the outbreak was probably going on in parts of the planet, maybe here in the US, but we weren't really aware of it at that point. So we had two energy auditors come to our house <clears throat> on February 11th, and they issued a 21 page report with uh, a fitness score from like zero to 100. Uh, they issued the report, the auditors issued recommendations. They addressed attic insulation and air sealing, wall insulation, the heating system, uh, window types, air conditioning efficiency, and the age of our AC units. They did a uh, carbon monoxide test. Uh, the report includes rebate information, additional steps for saving energy. And it was a, a very well-written, clear, simple to understand report, which uh, was hugely beneficial. We had three recommendations for, for us. We had a combustion issue. I live in a, in a multi-level house. There's four levels in my house. It was built in 84. So we have a couple of small furnaces and one of the furnaces was not operating as the way it should have been. So they uh, caught that. And so I had a uh, HVAC contractor come out and did some modifications. Um, also, excuse me, um, we have an old water heater and uh, it has exceeded the average lifetime expectancy of a water heater. It's still working, but uh, once everyone's vaccinated, I'm gonna have that replaced before I have an incident in the basement. Many years ago I did and it leaked, but it's in the basement, it's concrete, so it wouldn't be a disaster, but it would be a mess. Uh, it really was very positive. You know, the, the auditors are very polite. Um, would I recommend it? Absolutely, positively. It was a very wise investment of $50. Um, and it's good to know that our house is very uh, energy efficient and we got a very high score, but having an environmental background, I was very concerned about energy efficiency since we moved in. Uh, you know, just for an example, we have R55 in the attic, which was way above code. 
but I knew that it would pay for itself over the years. And it has, <clears throat> and our house has uh, double glazed windows. So it was a very positive experience that I highly recommend. And if anyone has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. And if not, have a great evening. Brian, thank you very much. Um, for the uh, benefit of the folks who uh, are with us and may have some questions, again, the best way to do that will probably be to uh, post a question in the chat box. You can send it directly to me if you want. Uh, that's, that's super easy. Or if you want to let everybody know what your question is, that's fine too. Um, but we'll be, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat box uh, to see if there's anything coming through here. Fantastic. So uh, I just wanted to thank first off Stacy uh, for, for uh, giving us all that information, our expertise, and also Brian for coming on here tonight and uh, sharing his experience. It's I'm um, glad to have both of them here. Uh, Stacy, could you please go to the next slide? All right, so before we get to questions, I just want to give out this information for coming up next. Uh, so again, this was just the first um, webinar that we've had in our webinar series, because uh, it's a series, we're gonna keep having them again every uh, month on the first Tuesday. So uh, this one was just sort of get you to know a little bit more about the Home Energy Squad visits, how those work, things that you can do. Our next one's gonna dive a little bit deeper into after the audit, now what? So looking specifically at financing options and other things like that when you're actually looking to do those improvements. So again, that will be Tuesday, February 2nd. It'll be at 6 p.m., so same time. And then we're gonna have, our guest will be Danielle uh, Hawk. Hopefully I didn't uh, mess up that name, but Danielle will be here to talk to us more about that. And we'll maybe have some other experts too and some other information about um, what you can get for um, for assistance with those and how those how you can take those next steps and hopefully make it as affordable as possible. Um, so again, uh, look to sign up for the Home Energy Squad visit. We can go to the next slide, please. And that is uh, sort of the end of our presentation right now. Uh, it was a lot of info in a short amount of time, but uh, we can turn to Mike and maybe turn and see if we have any questions. If you have questions, feel free to type them in. One other thing that might be uh, Good info to get to would be if you um, anyone can do this but if you could write in where you heard about this um, our heard about our presentation here today I know we put it out in a lot of different um, different mediums so it'd be great to know where people heard about uh, this webinar series be it from the Minnetonka memo uh, or from uh, an email from our subscriber list or elsewhere uh, feel free to throw those in and also throw in your questions and Mike will start um, Putting, uh, letting us know what those questions are, because I'm sure more than one person has a question. I'm sure more and several other people do too. Thank you, Drew. Um, there, uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is, um, is Minnetonka considering any incentive program for households looking at switching from fossil fuel heating and appliances to electric? Could you repeat that question one more time, Mike? Sorry, I was uh, a little static. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Is Minnetonka considering any incentive program for households looking at switching from fossil fuel heating and appliances to electric? As for the city of Minnetonka, we don't have anything for it right now. Um, so it's something we definitely look into, but as of right this moment, we don't have anything specific. I think really the things you'd be looking for is the savings you're gonna get from switching that to electric. I know um, there might be opportunities to get some savings off of that, it might not be. So it's something really to look at really closely before you make that switch, but nothing right now. And then there was another question um, that had to do with uh, Stacy's uh, discussion about um, insulation and finding empty wall cavities. It had to do with how do you determine whether or not you have empty wall cavities? Um, and actually, I would love to take this question. Take this question. Um, in an earlier life, I actually was a Home Energy Squad auditor, and um, one of the things that we would do once we visited the home was to find a closet with, the, with an exterior wall. Uh, there we, we would drill a two inch hole kind of low and in a discrete spot. And that would allow us to inspect what kind of insulation was in the exterior walls. Uh, and it was kind of fascinating what we, what we could find. Uh, in my own house was built in 1900 and uh, they found horse hair. 
Um, in other houses, they find old newspapers. Sometimes they find sawdust. Um, and in, in a lot of older houses, they find nothing at all. But that's the most reliable way to do it. Um, and not to worry, there are, there are plastic caps designed for the purpose that uh, they cover up the hole once, once it's been inspected. There's also a question about um, about solar and uh, and I think you're muted right now, Mike. There we go. Sorry. There was also another question about solar and. Um, I presume that the question was how many homes in Minnetonka are using on-site solar. Um, Drew, is, does the city of Minnetonka keep track of that or is that something that, that there are records on? So we don't have anything uh, specific with a running number of how many we have. What we do sort of keep track of is how many permits we get every year. Um, I don't have them accumulated, unfortunately, but uh, for the person who's asking that question, I can look back to see what we've had from 2014 to 2018 for permits. Looks like um, we've had generally hovering right around 10 permits every year, um, a little bit under in 2014, right at 10 in 2015. And then we're above that in 16, 17, right around, it looks like 11 to 13, and then back at 10. Uh, I do know if I'm remembering later, we have a larger amount that came through in 2019, but I don't have that info right in front of me. Um, I know something else, just if someone is interested in solar, we do have a solar uh, section in our uh, on our web page on our sustainable Minnetonka page. So if you're interested in looking, I know there's a lot of different ways to have solar. We're, we're going to have probably a topic specifically on renewable energy. But if you can't wait for that, you can feel free to go into our uh, page and also look in there. And there's a lot of different ways you can assist, not just on site, but also with off site, like the city of Minnetonka does with our uh, solar that we uh, go through and we get our uh, solar through that sort of purchasing. So it's not on our site, it's off site. But again, a very long topic you can talk about for a very long time. But the short answer is we get roughly 10, a little bit more than that every year. And I think the last years we've been getting a few more actually from uh, people signing up to or people installing solar on their building. And we will be actually one of the, the future webinars is uh, we're going to have an, a few of them actually on different elements of renewable energy. And uh, it's important to, to remember that solar can be um, on site where you see truly those traditional solar panels on rooftops and that kind of thing, as well as subscription based options. Um, so we'll be talking about both of those, um, which are great opportunities um, to uh, green up your, um, your energy consumption. Um, as far as other questions are concerned, let me just check and see if there's anything else here that's come in. Um, there was a, um, a question about whether or not one of the webinars that we do uh, might just simply be a review of the energy action plan work that was done by the team, the energy action team earlier this, uh, well, last year. Um, and actually, I think that that um, what I might suggest is that we may send out a little bit of an email um, with some research and asking people um, about the subjects that they'd be interested in for future for future uh, webinars. We have a pretty good calendar shaping up already, but there are still there are still some open holes. So we'd be happy to uh, to get some input on uh, on the, the most appealing subjects there. And that I believe is all the questions. Does anybody else have any other thoughts, questions, comments for the good of the order here? I feel like an auctioneer going once, going twice. I think I just saw one come through, Mike. I have not received it, Drew. So if you'd like to cover it. I think, then... I, I, think I got one actually. Yeah, so it says, um, let's see here. What would you recommend for renters? So I think that is a tricky one. Um, I know I'm actually a renter myself. So um, I know there's things you can do um, as far as with your own purchasing of energy, but I'll, before I'll pass this over to Stacy, I will say you'll wanna talk really closely with your landlord uh, just regarding what you can and can't do 
Uh, but Stacy, I'll turn this question over to you to see what there, are there any things you can do if you're a renter or have you worked with anyone who's been a renter? Yeah, we actually work with um, renters a lot. And of course that is a good uh, prerequisite to check in with the landlord, make sure they're okay with um, you installing some energy saving products at the visit or the home energy squad installing them. Uh, but yeah, we usually recommend the energy saver visit for renters. Uh, also for people who are in uh, condos uh, and manufactured homes, those are, uh, that's a good type of visit. Um, but specifically speaking to renters, because they're probably not going to be making any major investments in improving the uh, insulation levels in the home or um, replacing furnaces, water heaters, um, the energy saver visit is a shorter visit. It's a less expensive visit um, and you still get lots of great products. So LED light bulbs, no charge for these product, products, LED light bulbs, uh, high efficiency shower heads, faucet aerators, door weather stripping, programmable thermostat if there's not already one in the home. Um, so lots of great things that you can start benefiting from um, reducing your uh, utility bills right away. And um, of course, if, if you are really interested in you're a renter and maybe you're looking at a rent buy situation, um, you can, as long as your landlord is okay with you having the energy planner visit, um, maybe the landlord even wants to be involved if they are interested in making those upgrades. Um, that's also fine. Every, uh, we, we like to work with people and get them in the best um, visit that is going to um, serve their needs customized visits. Um, so I know there are, I've, I've worked with some property owners in Minnetonka who are interested with making a lot of improvements in their homes. So um, it, it's different from situation to situation, but most renters have the energy saver visit. Hey, Stacy and, and Drew, also there is a program for um, buildings that have five or more dwellings. Um, Excel Energy and Centerpoint Energy have teamed up on a program called Multifamily Building Efficiency. So if you find yourself living in a building uh, of that size, um, it's a great opportunity for property managers to reduce the expense of running the building. Um, and they will go in and, and it's a I guess, uh, without going into incredible depth, it's kind of like a home energy squad visit for a big building. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's very low cost and they do a lot of wonderful work to, to, to get buildings kind of tuned up and running much more efficiently. Um, we get great reviews on that program. So if you happen to be living in a big building, um, that may be an opportunity for your landlord um, that, that will ultimately pay some dividends down the road. And with that, I think that we are in pretty good shape. We're coming right up on top of the hour. Unless there are any extra questions, we will say thank you and we will see you the first Tuesday of next month. Um, and I hope that you'll all be um, dressed in festive Groundhog Day attire. Uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, celebrating the holiday appropriately. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending. Have a great night.